like you said, men can use their strength to, you know, build up cities, and also they can use their strength to tear them down. And so what people want to do is, okay, let's just remove their strength altogether. And I meet a lot of young men, and you probably experienced this numerous of times throughout your, 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 your work, where I meet a lot of young men whose mom wanted to make them the anti-man. You know, you're not mm-hmm. going to be like your dad. You're not going to be like this guy. You're not going to be this. And these men end up having no backbone. They end up having no ability to speak their mind, and they become these prototypical nice guys. And so what has been your experience with dealing with these men who have these nice guy tendencies who can't stand up for themselves, who their moms raised them to be this type of anti-man? Yeah, well, some, sometimes that can also be temperamental, right? Because if a man happens to be high in agreeableness, this is also true of women, they're, they're much more conflict-averse and, and, and they're nicer in their temperament. So, so, and so if you get an agreeable boy, let's say, who also has a doting mother, then you might have that problem. There's other ways of having that problem, but that's one way. Well, when I saw people like that in therapy, they were often resentful and angry and passive-aggressive, and, and getting in their own way, often to spite, you know, whoever was doting on them, let's say. And so the first thing I would do is listen to why they were there, and then start to unpack that anger, and then start to work with the individual to figure out how to voice that. You know, for, you have to separate out what's old history and useless and what's just narcissism and infantilism from genuine concerns. But if you listen to people, they will sort that out for themselves. That's one of the cool things about being a therapist, is if you listen, that happens more or less by itself. And then, as a behavioral psychologist, you know, maybe someone like that would need a raise, but would be afraid to ask their boss. Well, we just practice that. It's like, okay, well, first of all, why should your boss give you a raise? There might be good reasons. He doesn't want to lose you because you're a good worker. Well, are you a good worker? And if you weren't, well, we'd solve that problem. Put yourself in a position where you you deserve the raise. Okay, well, now you're too timid for, or you're too unskilled because you have to differentiate those two things too because some people who can't stand up for themselves actually don't know how, whereas others are afraid and some are both. And so you have to figure out so some of it's skill training. Well, how do you actually ask your boss for a raise? Well, you tell the truth. That's the best way. You say, look, you know, here's what I'm doing. Here's why it's really useful for you. Um, it looks like I'm somewhat underpaid in this role. That's demotivating me, possibly. I also have other options. I think I need, you know, 15% more, and I'm interested in moving up, and here's what I'll do for you if you do that. And so, th- you know, think about it. And then if your boss doesn't do that and all that's true, well, then you should be assertive enough to find another job. Or maybe you look for another job before you even ask for the raise. Put your CV together, right? Update it so you're not afraid to look for another job. All this is strategic thinking. That was another thing that was really fun about clinical work. Most of my clients, they doubled or tripled their salaries within three or four years. Oh, you know, wow. they worked at it. This, this wasn't nothing. This was major league strategic planning. And that was true for women and men, you know. So, and that, that's very fun to, to watch that happen. Strategy, oh, that strategize. Sense. Think clearly about it, right? And get your act together. You know, and you got to see what's getting in your way. So maybe you're afraid to ask your boss for a raise because if he says no, you'd have to look for a job and you don't have your resume or CV updated. And the reason you don't have it updated is because you're embarrassed about it's the lacks in it, and you don't want to face the lacks because then you'd have to see how you didn't get educated properly because you were useless, and you'd have to take steps to rectify that. And Like, it's a real mess down there, right? Yeah. The reasons you're not asking, so we'd lay that on it. Okay, well, here's some holes, and they're not good. What could you do to fix those? And then you break it down into small steps, right? Implementable steps, because that's very practical. So that's a good thing to know if you're... If you're if you have your sight set on a goal, you'll move towards it if you break the steps down small enough so that even someone as useless as you will do it. And that also requires a fair bit of humility because what you might find, especially if you're avoiding something, is that the step you are actually willing to take is so small that you're embarrassed to admit it to yourself so you won't take any steps at all. 
well, that's completely counterproductive. And, and the reason that's not proper thinking, let's say, or productive thinking is that while small steps get bigger real fast and you, it doesn't matter where you start. If you're doubling your utility every you know, few weeks, who cares where you start? It starts to take off real quick. And so you don't want to be embarrassed. You don't want to be so embarrassed by where you are that it stops you from becoming who you could be. And, and that's tough. It can be re that's real tough. I'm not making light of that. I see exactly why people avoid, but it's, it's, not, a, it's not a good solution. So. so there you guys have it, man. That's um, some pretty sound advice that uh, Jordan Peterson gives if you want to move up in your company. Um, I'm a very firm believer in um, definitely moving jobs if you're not going to be able to get what you want at your job. Um, I'm, myself, I've had many, 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 many jobs. I've had probably 30 different jobs. Not even lying, you guys. Not kidding. And um, I've, I've been promoted... At least six, seven, I want to say anywhere between six to ten times. I've been promoted a lot, you guys. And um, I, I, I can advocate for a lot of the stuff that he's saying. You, you definitely do have to, you know, come to the table with everything laid out. What you've accomplished. What you can do. What consistency that you've shown. Especially when it comes to jobs. You've got to, the one thing for me, because I only have a high school diploma, I'm also federally registered in, uh, in the government for, with the NMLS, uh, the National Mortgage uh, uh, Licensing uh, Bureau and shit like that, you guys. So I, I'm also, uh, I, I do have that under my belt, but I, I only have a high school diploma, but I've been to a lot of really nice jobs and I'm, I'm currently working at some really nice jobs and it's because of my ability and I'm not afraid to move to another job you've got to know when you you're approaching that glass ceiling they may not ever tell you that you're they're not going to promote you but the feeling the environment the way that the supervisors and everything talks to you it may be like, okay, yeah, you're not going to move up. You're never really going to move up. They just plan on you being an agent for the rest of your life. And the way that they treat other people, you know, especially like, like, let's just being honest, you guys, it's 2021. Being black definitely does have its pros and cons. And a lot of it does have some cons compared to other white men in your, or other race of men in your area. As men, as black men, you do have to work a lot harder. It's, there's no, no doubts about that, you guys. I'm so qualified in so many areas, but I still have to continue to show my worth, show my work, and put in the put in even more effort, twice as much work as someone else who is slightly less qualified, has less experience, then they still get the promotion. But I'm okay. I'm okay with that. You know why? Because I've built a life around not worrying about that promotion. That may not ever happen, you guys. And I've gotten promoted many, many times. And even still, I do not rely on that. And that's something that I don't think anyone should. But if you do want to move up, um, let me know if this kind of helped you guys out. Um, let me know if Jordan Peterson's advice is going to help you. Uh, are you going to go back to your resume? Do you use Do you use Indeed? Do you actually negotiate your... Um, when's the last time you actually asked for a raise or promotion? Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. My name is Trey with Unpopular Opinions, man. And I hope you guys have a great one.